Well guys, this looks amazing. Andres is going to be so excited for his birthday party. It's not Andres' birthday, this is for his favorite game. So we set this all up for a dumb game. Yes, now quick, put these party hats on. Where's Andres? Andres, why are you not home? My god, dude, no, Sucrit, no, I'm at college, dude, you're not supposed to call me. But it's Swap Force's birthday. Andres, I'm sorry, family, but I don't think he's gonna sh- Burn it up, we're talking about Swap Force! Honestly, not my smartest idea. <laughs> In 2011, Skyline Inspired's Adventure was released, and although it wasn't the first Bring Toys to Life game, it blew up in such a massive way, with Activision stating that they sold over 30 million Skyliners toys. And one year later, in 2012, Skyliners Giant was released, and would see similar success. By this point, the series was already so popular that a third game pretty much just had to happen. And on February 5th of 2013, the trailer announced that Skyliners Swap Force would be uploaded to the Skyliners YouTube channel, with them also holding a press conference, giving us a first look at the game, with them showing a part of the level, how the swapping gimmicks work, while also showing us the biggest addition to Skylanders jumping. Over the next few months, more trailers, characters, and new information about the game would be shown off. And later that year, Skylanders Swap Force was released for the Xbox 360, PS3, 3DS, Wii U, and Wii on October 13th in North America, October 16th in Australia, and October 18th in Europe. And eventually would also release the Xbox One and PS4 as launch titles for both consoles. Oh no, you are not actually gonna do it. I'm gonna name every character. The starter pack for consoles included Washbuckler, Blast Zone, and Series 3 Ninja Stealth Elf. And if you bought this $1 card at Target, not only would you reserve a copy for the game, but you would also receive the the UFO hat, but also available at launch being a GameStop exclusive was the Dark Edition Starter Pack, which includes dark variants of all three of the previously mentioned characters, Series 3 Mega Ram Spyro, and Slobbertooth, with both of the character's original variants being available in single and triple packs. The 3DS Starter Pack would include Rattleshake, who not only was available in single and double packs, but also received the variant being Quick Draw Rattleshake, which at the time was a free-to-lay exclusive, but eventually was made available in stores. Free Ranger, who as well was also available outside of the Starter Pack, and got a legendary variant that same waves, and the variant to Lava Barf Eruptor, who himself was released in various different packs, Volcanic Eruptor, Magna Charge and Hoot Loop were other swappers available at launch, with Magna Charge having a target exclusive Nitro variant which was only available at double packs at launch but later on in Wave 4 was released on his own. Hoot Loop also had a variant that was exclusive to Walmart being Enchanted Hoot Loop. The first Avenger pack was also available at launch, which included the Tower of Time expansion piece, the magic item Sky Diamond and Battle Hammer, and the Skylander Pop Ford, with him during Wave 5 releasing a single pack for some reason. And a similar thing would happen with the Sheepwreck Island expansion pack, which included the Sheepwreck Island expansion piece, the Platinum Sheep and the Groove Machine magic items, and the Skylander Windup, which eventually was also released outside of the pack. Windup also had a variant that was never released, being Vicarious Vision's Windup. He was found in the files for the game and was meant to be a reference towards the developers of Swap Force, but it's unknown why he was main and if he was ever intended to be released. The first battle pack was released during Wave 1, including the Fiery Forge magic item, Bumble Blast, who later on during Wave 2 got a Christmas variant being Jolly Bumble Blast, and during Wave 5, his Lycor version was released, and Series 3 Knockout Terrafin, who eventually was also released in triple and single packs. The rest of the figures released during Wave 1 were Series 2 Blizzard Chill, Series 2 Super Gold Pop Fizz, Rollerblade, Zulu, and Countdown, with all of them being available in various different packs, with Zulu getting a Legendary variant during Wave 2, and Countdown getting a Lycor variant during Wave 3, and a Soccer variant named Kickoff Countdown during the final wave. Lastly, there was a batch of Lycor figures, including Lycor Warnado and Lycor Flashwing, Lycor Grim Creeper, who also got a Legendary variant, and his normal version was released in Wave 3, in the Arcanian Crossbow Battle Pack, with the Arcanian Crossbow Magic Item and Series 2 Fornhorn Camo, who was also released in a Trouble Pack later on. Lycor Star Strike, who got an Enchanted Variant during Wave 4, and his normal version was released during Wave 2 in various different packs. And lastly, Lycor Smolderdash, with her that year having an employee exclusive variant named Snowderdash, and the normal version would release during Wave 3 in a single pack. When will he shut up? Dude, he just started. Wave 2 would be released a few weeks after, with the swappers Boomjack, Gorilla Drill, Firecracker, and Night Shift in single and double packs. Firecracker would have a difficult to find Golden Chase variant, and a Jade version would be released in the final wave, while Night Shift had a Legendary variant later that same wave. The other characters released during this wave were Series 3 Anchors Away Gilgrunt, Series 2 Heavy Duty Sprocket, you said duty, Series 3 Big Bang Trigger Happy, Series 3 Twin Blade Chop Chop, Scorp, and Riptide. Although the last three would have Green Chase variants, Heavy Duty Sprocket having a Metal Chase variant, and Big Bang Trigger Happy having an Easter variant named Springtime Trigger Happy, which in itself had a chase variant being flocked Springtime Trigger Happy. Yes, the variant got a variant. I've made that joke before.
The Wii U bundle would also be released in Wave 2, containing a special chase variant of Washbuckler, being metallic green Washbuckler. Wait, what happened to my red carpet? Oh, come on, you gotta be kidding me. Apologies, Andres, my siblings, cousins, and I just really wanted to make a pillow for... Why do you have to ruin our fun? Later on, Wave 3 would be released having the swappers Rubble Rouser, Spy Res, and Stink Bomb, with the cores and reposes being Doombugs, Series 3 Phantom Cinder, Series 3 Hyper Beam Prison Break, Series 3 Horn Blast Whirlwind, and Lycor Wham Shell, with Stink Bomb having a gold and silver chase variant, and Doombug having a metallic red chase variant, which was given out at Toy Fair 2014. The last two waves would contain the last few unique characters, with Trap Shadow and Freeze Blade being released in Wave 4, with Trap Shadow having a silver and bronze chase variant, and Freeze Blade having a nitro variant. The final core character is being Frido and Scratch both released in single packs in Wave 4, then triple packs in Wave 5, then Friday releasing in an Easter egg, with Pump Shock also releasing in the same way, and eventually in a normal box. Series 2 Firebone Hot Dog and Series 2 Turbo Jet Bag would be the final reposes released, with Hot Dog having his own free to lay promotion, where you can get a green, purple, or red chase variant of him. The final unique character, Doomstone, would be releasing the final wave, and even he had a bronze and gold chase variant. All that is good to know. Let's just get this over with. Oh no, I'm not done yet. It's never really over with you. During the release of the Bane of My Existence, five triple packs containing Swap Force figures were released, called the Champion Pack. Not only does this confirm that Swap Force is the best game, I don't care what you say, it says Champion on the box, but even back then, this wasn't really worth buying, as the characters from Swap Force are significantly weaker in Imaginators. Okay, okay, let's play the game. Well... Those are these guys. God, okay, fine, okay, fine, fine, I get it, okay, fine. Template Template is a Skylander that was found in the files of Swap Force. It was used as a baseline to create all the other swappers, and even his own attack don't even do anything. Similar though, another character named Template Legacy was also found, but also doesn't really do anything special. As of now, you can technically play them if you put their data on NFC cards, with Template Template working in Swap Force Superchargers and Imaginators, but Template Legacy will only working on emulators. You know what? I'm done. This was an awful idea. Bird up, I'm done talking. We can play the game. Well then what are you waiting for? This is Skylander Swap Force. Wow. Just wow. The beginning music in any video game matters a lot. The music is meant to make you hyped up and excited for the game, while also fitting the tone of the game. With the previous Skylanders games music being alright, but in Swap Force, it really emphasizes how big this game is gonna be. Like, you're not playing an average Skylanders game, you're playing fucking Swap- My god, please shut up. The game begins with Eon introducing you to Skylands. This isn't my first rodeo, buddy. As he explains who the Swap Force are, their Skylanders are protected a volcano where every 100 years, four elementals create an explosion that helps bring more magic to Skylands. But at the last explosion, evil started attacking, and after the Swap Force beat up the bad guys, they would get stuck in the explosion, in which gave them the ability to swap their tops and bottoms, but the blast would also send them to us. Now, of course, in real life, we would go to a store and just buy the toys, but whatever. Flynn is on a vacation, patiently waiting for the volcano blast, as he's talking to Hugo and Callie. Flynn's head flies away as our new character shows up on her bird. We're not making the joke. She shows Flynn that she's being followed and tells him to fly into the volcano, but even in here we're still getting attacked by the first character named Chompy. Yeah, so this is the first and only time that the Chompies look like this, and this is noticeable with every variation on the Chompies in Swap Force. I mean, even LeBron missed 13,892 shots, so even this game can fuck up every now and then. As we go deeper, a replacement for the troll characters, the Greeb will start attacking the ship, and after killing every enemy, Flynn is able to fly out the volcano, with his ship getting hurt in the process. Now is where we learn the girl, named Tessa, village is under attack. Now the actual journey begins as you make your way to Woodboro, and since this is the first level, you get to learn the basics of the game, like being stuck in a battle gate, collecting treasures and encountering new enemies, while introducing new things to the series like the dual elemental gates, where you either need a swapper or two skylanders with both of the same elements. You also encounter swap zone, which if you have the correct base for your swapper, would allow you to play a minigame style challenge, with the first one being the rocket zone, which can only be played with blast zone and jidvac bottom parts. Base halves. All you have to do is just fly at the end as fast as possible, with the yellow rings giving you extra time. After an honestly pretty cool transition in encountering the Chompy Pod, you can enter the Air Elemental Gate, where we encounter my first actual problem with this game, the turret shooting sections. The turret shooting sections are always my least favorite part of any Skylander game, and for the first one, we have to kill 50 ships. After walking around a bit, you can find a chest that only the giants can open. This can be found throughout the entire game, it is a cute little way to make the giants feel useful. Then you find the next swap zone, the climb zone, which only Washbuckler and Spy Rise bases can go on. This one's better than the last swap zone, but not by much, as it's just going to the top while you avoid falling acorns. After saving more fox people in another great transition, you can find the dig swap zone, where only Rubble Rouser and Gorilla Drilla bases can go in. LOL. 
hole, you run around looking for glowing spots, mash the A button and start mining diamonds. Get three of them and that's it, all while in the dark. After continuing, you make it to the gate of the village, where it's being guarded by chompies and greebles. And after beating everyone up, the village is now open, with Tessa introducing Flynn to the village dryer, Rufus. I hate Rufus. Rufus informs Tessa that the chief's disc has been taken, with Tessa running to make plans to go save her. So how long is this game? The base game has like 17 levels. I wonder if that window would hurt. Rufus introduces you to the Hip Brothers, Huck and Grome, with Grome being the protector of the Power Pod, a spot where you can buy new abilities for your Skylander. Now we move on to level 2. Erdip, what did I tell you about biting the disc? Oh well, I guess we can't play. What? No, that just means we have to play the Xbox One version. I hate my life. The Greebles are working for Chaos, and while they're making a statue of him and Glumshanks, Chaos explains what purified darkness is, when zapping on any when it causes him to turn evil. Your hair smells like strawberry. Lynn and Tessa land in the area to find the Chiefstess, but the door is locked by the Shock and Bolt puzzle, where you have to get the characters Shock and Bolt together. Our first evilized characters, evilized Greebolt, are introduced, and after leaving the Fire Elemental Gate, you meet, um, Gilgrunt's brother, I don't want to spoil it. After interacting with the next enemy, you jump on a pad for another cool transition. In fighting a group of Greebolt, you can play the Bounce Swap Zone, with Rattleshake and Firecracking's bases where you bounce on islands until you make it to the end. It's one of my favorite ones, you know, I'm just saying. The Greeble Ironclad is cool. The Earth and Tech Gate are right over there, with the Sneak Swap Zone being on the left. Playable with Stink Bomb and Trap Shadows, um, hang on, give me a second. Lowest part. I fucking hate this one. This is probably the most in-depth swap zone out of all of them. With this one, you have to push this button by turning invisible, avoiding lasers, and twisting your joystick to open a door. Yeah, I hate doing this. Why do you sneeze? After opening another Shock and Bolt Gate, these guys are really cute. The Speed Swap Zone is next. Playable with Free Blade and Magna Charges, Ice Skate, and Wheel Parts. It's just racing and don't get hit for free rounds. I mean, it's not my favorite, but sure. After walking into a big scary cave, wait, hang on a second. Now that's strong. Damn it, I picked the wrong upgrade. The undead element gate is right outside, and in it, Scully asks for your help to get his hat back. After one more Shulk and Bolt puzzle, you get to the last part and a wave of enemies start attacking. And after getting everyone, you finally save the Chiefstess. Wow, you didn't tell me she was so old. Chaos is upset that the Greebles can't do anything right, so he comes up with a plan to evilize one of the four gods. Although Glumshanks doesn't seem too excited and thinks the plan will fail, Chaos evilizes him and is now more evil than he's ever been before. Once you return to Woodboro, Tuck asks for your help rebuilding his store. Tuck allows you to buy hats, bonus missions, and various other things. The Chiefess thanks you for rescuing her, he explains that you have to go protect and return the ancient elementals, or the gods, or whatever you want to call them. Apologies for the interruption, but can Father be a part of our Halloween costume? Why would I want? to be a part of that. Oh come on brother, all the guys are involved. We need a Donatello. You know, I could be Donatello. Fuck no. In chapter 3, we go see the ancient Flash Finn, but once we get there, the Greebles are already attacking and trying to evilize him. And after landing, we encounter our first enemy, the Grumble Bum Thresher. And after walking ahead, there's another rocket zone, which yes, is similar, but a little fun experience. Gilgrud's brother is given the name Snaggle Scale. I'm calling him Smaggle Daggle. I'm a Smaggle, I'm not an intro. As he asks you to fish for him, and he returns the favor by building us a bridge, which leads us to the Life Spell Punk, who helps heal attacked enemies. And more ahead, we meet the Grumble Bum Rocket Shooter. The Life Gate is more ahead. This sensor button sucks. Daggle is willing to take us down the river, but we have to steer the boat while he tells us his life story about how people really don't know how to shut up. Someone should really take that advice. The gates close and after fishing for a gear to help us open it, Michael continues talking and gives us some advice about being in an arena. Another gate is closed, so we have to find another gear. But before we do that, let's go into the magic gate. It's played in a 2D style, which isn't really seen much in the Skylander series. Continuing on our trip with Smaggle, he talks about his fighting days, but I died. Twice. I should have picked easy. Once you land, a bunch of enemies are waiting for you. After they're gone, the village wants to thank you by hiding a bunch of treasure to find. How did Scully get here? Onward to the next section. Holy shit, we actually made it. The zone only Free Ranger and Doomstone's other half can go in, the spin swap zone. I don't like it. Look, the sneak zone is bad because I don't like doing it, but the spin zone makes me feel more stupid than I actually am. You're made to feel like a pinball in a machine, and although the first one isn't that hard, this specific zone gets more and more difficult as we go along. The Greebles then evilize a bog hog, and after defeating it and jumping on a pad, more evil Life bog hogs show up. The final unique swap zone, teleport swap zone, is right outside, which only Night Shift and Hootloop's basements, wait, that doesn't make sense, bottom parts can be used. On this one, you teleport onto different platforms to collect nine pyramids. Although it's a bit odd, it's honestly my favorite one of the eight different zones. Now, the ancient Flash Fin. You take out the four crystals trying to evilize them, and now he goes to Wordborough where he can be protected. But once we're back, the Chief does help us get in contact with Eon, which he shows us to Portal Master Rank, which is made into a bigger deal than it actually is, as all it does is just count up how many stars you've collected. Hey, Andres, me and the girls are going to the mall. Would you like me to pick anything up? Can I get called to the lamb on Switch? Alright, see you guys later. 
you are not even gonna play. I'll just have to get her out of here. Magadago explains that the pink crystals were used before in the rampant ruins. So in chapter 4, we go there and see Glumshing digging a hole to try to get more purified darkness. Once we land, this tree guy, uh, Tree Rex's little brother, I, I need to stop with this comparison, man. Tells us that we have to stop whatever evil is going on. Why do you think I'm here? After fighting the Chompy Rustbud, the Archean Bear Bot, and going to the Fire and Magic Gate, we now meet a Sugar Bat, who then is turned into an evil eyed Sugar Bat. After killing a bunch of them and going on the second climb zone, Gear it off. Looks pretty hopeless to me. This is the meanest he's ever been. And Archean Rip Rupto joins. And this is probably the most annoying enemy, as when he spins, he can't get hurt. There's also these Archean Slam Shock enemies, but also, also, the Speed Zone and the Earth Zone are like right there. The next gate is being guarded by bad guys. Lumshanks notices you and starts shooting missiles. I have my two IRO friends. I have Bow Black, so I've been doing a show with for like three years. The Water Gate has a rock that asks you to move him in the creepiest way possible. Oh, that's great. Now a little to the left. Oh. To the right. I don't think that was the intention, but it just gives that tone. All that just for a winged sapphire. Next will be another bounce swap zone, with this one including breakable rocks. Yay. Moving ahead, we get sought by another gate, and opening it allows us to shine light to the statue. And after beating up more enemies and shining more light, we finally awaken the monkey, with it destroying whatever Glumshanks was doing. <laughs> Glumshanks right gets back up and thinks WWLKD. What would Lord Chaos do? Makes a car out of the broken machine and hits the monkey. And our first actual boss fight happens in chapter 5. And yes, the boss fight levels are considered their own level. You have to get Glumshanks to drive his vehicle into these spikes, which will cause him to halt in place, giving you time to hit him. The first round is easy enough, while in the second, spikes are removed and he starts shooting rockets. And in the final round, there's only one spike. And Glumshanks gets the Archean Knuckle Dusters to start fighting. Damn it. Okay, I think Sprock will be good enough. I don't really get the hate behind Sprocket because she's not that bad. Okay, maybe she is. After defeating Glumshanks, he's unevilized and goes back to Chaos. The mirror in his room starts talking, as it's revealed that it's Chaos's mom, who shows up to make fun of him. When we get back to Woodboro, Smaggle opens up the arena. Hey, bird up. What made you think I would play with you? How am I supposed to play with them? Who the hell are you? I'm your landlord. Oh, you're the guy I'm not supposed to open the door to. Silly me, man. Where's my money? Okay, look, I don't have the money for you, right? But we can play a pretty good game. Oh, okay. Press 3. Let's play Swappers instead. No, wait. Run while you still can. I mean, it can't be that bad. Five minutes later. Did that bird just fucking talk? Battle mode has been in Skylander since the beginning, and is very similar in Swap Wars, but even after tapping in all the expansion pieces, still has less content compared to the previous games. First, there's Battle Arena, which is the basic pick a Skylander and fight each other. Power-ups can be turned on and off, with the other options you're able to select how many lives you want, and fair play, where I'm guessing both players' Skylanders are both on the max level. Five stages can be played on, the Rampant Ruin, Quicksand Canary, Frozen Outpost, Fiery Forward, and Trenches Beach. Then there's Ring Out. It's a similar mode, but instead your goal is to knock the other player out of the arena. In the stages, Rampant Ruin, Ruins, Fiery Forage, again, Quick Draw Coral, Blossom Island, and TikTok Tourist. There's also the Arena mode with 20 different levels. It's your basic stay in a small circle and kill every enemy, and this can be done in solos, teams, or rival mode, where the players are going against each other to see who can get the most points. Well, that was the battle mode in Swap Force. What do you think? That shit was ass. I wanna kill myself. Don't worry, Andres. I will get that for you. Oh, young lady, may I offer you a monster energy drink? Have you seen that dude with glasses? He's kinda gay looking. I believe so. Please come inside. Why, thank you. Whoa! I think she likes the room. Leonard, are you here? He made me play Swarm Force. You monster! Ow! Oh my god, that was awesome. I've never seen someone do that before. Getting back into the story, in Chapter 6, the Chiefess tells us to go to the Iron Jaw Club to find the ancient Terra Squid. But Chaos's team is already attacking the city, and once we land, we're introduced to Marshall Wheellock, he a cowboy. After meeting the Pirate Powder Keck, we see the first type of golem, the Fiery Gear Golem. Getting rid of him, going up an elevator, and doing the third rocket zone, they really like this one. You have to bounce on music pads to open a door. Once we get a lever, it creates a bridge, introducing us to the Pirate Slam Spin, who's similar to the previous spinning character, can't be hurt while spinning. After shooting yourself into the first plane, you can find the Tech and Air Gate, but instead of doing that you bounce on more music pads and now the bullshit parts of the level start happening first there's a lever in the house fair enough makes sense but the chest is above the building okay well i can see many people going up there but how the hell was i supposed to know that if you jump on a bed enough times then you get an off-brand rocky roll plushie now that i'm done with the dig zone here's me for a minute being confused as to where to get the soul gem crossing another bridge we see a congre get evilized after we defeat all the enemies and destroy another ship we see another 2d section in the tech gate and going into the life gate which involves the music pads the teleport zone is right outside the gate and once we're done with all of that um 
hey Bertup, can you stop biting the cable? We beat up a bunch of evilized carriages in the fire golem, and we're able to destroy the last airship. Although the shark cowboys can't really help, they do know someone named Sharkfin who can. Hey guys, we're back, and Andres, we found the game you wanted, and Bertup's son, we found the perfect game for you. Wait, really? Thank you so much, Bertup's girlfriend. I am beyond grateful to have the opportunity to call you my. Well, while I'm still excited, what the hell is even a James Pond? In chapter 7, we go to Monsleyville? How the fuck do you say that? Blaine introduces himself to Shellshock as the Greebles evil eyes whiskers. We're treated to a mini boss fight, but he gets tired and flies away. This is where we meet Sharpfin. The chompy powerhouse are blocking you. Well, that was easy. Shellshock is busy escaping and we follow him in the best part of this level, the rail grinding sections. He looks so visually appealing as you get to see all the little details the developers put in. The fire gate is sort of hidden away and as we continue walking we have to blow up two walls of a bomb and cannon. And fuck I forgot to get that soul gem. There's like a speed zone right there. I know you don't care. Earth Gear Golem is next enemy, or the Sand Golem if you want to be specific. And after a cool transition, catching up with Evil Eyes Whiskers, and hang on a second, there's a climb zone and a water and air gate right here. And also, fun fact, I found out that Tom Kenny, the same voice actor for Ice King and SpongeBob, also voices Stink Bomb. I don't know, I thought that was cool. We finally have a boss fight with Whiskers. And after one more rail grind section, more bad guys, a tech gate, a stupid spin zone, bombing a wall, and even more bad guys, we get to have a one on one fight with Shellshock. But once he's defeated, we head back to Woodboro, as Wheel Lock gives us a fishing Hole. I'm never gonna use it, but you know, thanks. You know, I wonder if I stand like this, I'll become faster. I was thinking the same thing. Now that we have Sharp Fin, in chapter 8 we head to the Twisty Tunnels, but Chaos is watching the Terra Squid as his mom calls in to reveal his plan involving the Fire Viper. Once the team land, the trolls, wait their back, are attacking, with her first troll being the Catted Crusher. After going into a fairly unique sneak zone, digging for a key, meeting Boom Boss, and the air gate with Bird Up. We have to destroy three evilizer crystals by shrinking down and unscrewing the crystal? Th that's how that works? But going ahead, the fire viper notices you and starts shooting fireballs. Okay, look, I'm not giving up on her. I find the value in the value- I think you just suck at the game. Once we meet the air spell punk, destroy the next evil eyes crystal, going into the undead and earth gate, skipping a lot of college work for this, meeting the air gear golem, going into the spin zone and the water gate, we make it to the worst part of the level, the forced turret shooting section. Dude, guess what? Bounce bounce zone. I need to include like a joke here, but I, I don't really have anything, sorry. Now that we broke the last crystal, the fire viper attacks in chapter 9, just a few rounds of shooting plungers at him and break the crystals that are on his head. During the final round, he eats you and you have to break the crystal in his stomach. Now that we save the the terror squid, she's sent to Woodboro to be protected. Chaos is busy playing a board game with the Greebles, while Chaos's mom is having a dinner party with her crew, but is really there to help Chaos. Nice, halfway there. Hey Andres, aren't these some of your toys? Wow, these look very nice. I hope Andres talks about them. You idiots, now he's gonna keep going. As mentioned before, two expansion packs were released, being the Tower of Time and Sheepwreck Island, with both being different and not connected with the main story of the game. Starting with the Tower of Time, the squirrel people need Flint and the Skyler's help, as the clock keeps going backward in time, with our new villain Captain Cluck causing the entire problem. Now that we're actually playing, we have Time Stopper things, which as the name implies, stop time. To stop Cluck, we have to get into the Clock Tower, but we have to find free gears to open the door. But remember, it's a Skylanders level, so in the first section there's a tech gate and a dig zone. But after making it across, we get our first gear. But Cluck notices you and starts attacking as we're introduced to the time spell pun. For the last two gears, we pretty much just repeat the process of walking into arena, just going into a few zones like the spin, air, and climbing zone, while also meeting the clock gear golem and having a small fight with clock. But after getting all the gears, you can finally go into the clock tower. You go up an elevator and beat up a bunch of enemies, and after reaching the top, we get a boss fight of clock, while the time spell punks are constantly unpausing the time. But once you beat up clock, you see him outside of his suit, and it's revealed that it's Bird Up's dad? Wait, father, oh my god, it's the news. Wait, where's he does make an appearance again in Superchargers, but I, I'm, I don't feel like talking about that game. I can't believe we just met Father's father. I feel dumb we're hanging around you guys. Now in the Sheepwreck Island, Flynn is sent to another world, and once we land, we're introduced to the Sheep Mage. There appears to be an imposter among us. What? Flynn gets spotted and is turned into a sheep. Please place Skylander in the portal. I mean, yes, nicely so. After the sheep mage gets turned into a bigger sheep and spits keys at you. Recently, somebody sent me this shit. Are you and Dumpy best friends? 
Oh look, a rocket zone. And an undead zone. And the music pads from chapter 6. What the heck? Our first new enemies, the Vortex Gear Golems. And since I know you want to know, all they do is just slam the ground. But there'll be no time to waste, or there'll be sheep all over the place. You don't say, crab man. There's also a sneak zone, and oh, a fire and undead zone, and a teleport and air zone. But eventually, you make it to probably the most disappointing boss fight in all of Swap Wars. Pretty much, hurt enemies, then you go through a maze to hurt the choppy mage, or just do what I do and just pick a character that can shoot really far and just shoot them. You haven't seen the last of me! Fun fact, uh, this is the last time you'll ever see him. By the end of it, Flynn gets turned back into his normal self and the crab and him go back to the real world. Fucking yippee. Overall, the expansion packs in Swap Force are a little fun, but other than wanting to 100% the game, these levels just aren't really worth playing. Whether it's due to the levels just feeling like they take forever, or just having an idea that's just not that interesting. Although I'm glad they're here, I can hardly see the value in both packs. Andres, while you were talking, I did your laundry. Oh well thank you, Berta Bragg, this one's kinda getting messy too. Hey bird up, you know you put the red sweater with all the white clothes right. What? Okay well, I don't think anything bad will happen. I just don't get it, like how did he turn it pink? Now we have to find the ancient frost town. So in chapter 10, we go to the Boney Islands, where the frost elves have something to help, but they're being attacked by cyclopses. We have to transport the frost elves out of here, but we have to travel through the museum, which is being attacked by the cyclopses, like the cold spear cyclops. There's nothing I even give a shit about right now, okay? And the cyclops gazer mage, also navigating the ship. But we run out of gas, so we have to go find more. And after going past the cyclops snow blasters, the chompy frost flower, and the magic and life gate, we got gas. But now we have a turret shooting section. Why they felt like this was necessary, I don't fucking know. But eventually, Eventually we crashed the car. One climbing magic gate and dig zone later, and also a loose cannon right there, so yeah. We eventually make it back to the ship, but also we could go to the rocket and earth gate. If you can't tell, I'm not saying anything special about each zone because there's not really much to say, but eventually after getting more gas, we have another turret oh shooting section. All the frost elves make it to the big ship, and we're given a device that can help us in the right direction. Why is this taking us four months? Andrew, stop crying. At least your sweater's not a different color. In chapter 11, we have to go get a rainbow shining horn from the viking people and well um okay let's see here there's uh more cyclopses this angry birds clone a rainbow grinding section and by the end of it you get the horn thing which leads us into chapter 12 featuring slave bam's family pretty much of this fog shit and now you save the ancient frost town apologies if it seemed like i skipped through the snow levels other than the things i mentioned there's not really a whole lot to talk about all right in chapter 13 the best boss fight in the game happens as mesmeralda attacks she's pretty much the star of a show and each round more enemies join these sweeping enemies bomb puppets guys in spinning blades. After defeating her, the Frost Town is saved, and now we have one more ancient god person to save. Look, Andres, I'm sorry for what happened. I even got you on your red sweater, just in time for dinner. Bird up, thank you, but what dinner? Hey boys, dinner's ready. So how was everyone's day? Well, I mean, it was going pretty well until my bird turned my sweater fank. I said I was sorry. You and still did, did it, Birda. Did okay, look, how about this, right? We just talked about Swap Force before Swap Force. The fuck does that even mean? Before Swap Force became the game that we know today, Vicarious Visions were developing a game titled Skylanders Shapeshifters, and looking at concept of the figures, it seemed like nearly every body part could be swapped between characters, with there being three prototype characters, Aftershock, Breezewing, and Krylon, but ultimately Shapeshifters was scrapped and eventually turned into Swap Force, and the three characters were reworked into other Skylanders, and also made cameo appearances in Imaginators. Although Shapeshifters seemed like an interesting idea, it was just a bit too ambitious, especially for a kid's game, and it's probably for the best that Swap Force came out of it. Oh. No, that wasn't so bad. So that means you liked it? You are way too hopeful for this game. Chapter 14. Honestly, what can I say? The turret shooting sections, the chompies looking different, the length of the level, the twisting of the joystick, quite literally anything bad I've said about Swap Wars so far can just be repeated again for this level. This time you have water balloons that you can just throw to stop the fire. How is that supposed to be fun? After beating Chaos in a boss fight, no, it's not over. The final ancient god, or whatever you want to call him, is sent back to Woodboro. And now that Tessa is the chiefess, the ceremony can now commence. No, it can't because Chaos's mom takes her son and Tessa and now we have to go save her in chapter 15. Before the next level starts, remember at the beginning of the game Flynn's ship broke in the volcano? Well, Sharpfriend was able to fix it and make it better than it's ever been. And in chapter 15, we take the crew to Chaos's fortress, but we need to sneak in and destroy free sheep shooters. With the help of the best character in the entire game that only appears in this level and one level in Superchargers, Softpaw, as he helps you disguise yourself as a sheep. After meeting the Chompy Pace Pedal, the K-Bot Gulp Gunner, K-Bot Mine Miner, disguising ourselves as a sheep, and solving a shock and bull puzzle, the first sheep shooter is destroyed. As we head to the second one, we run into a bounce zone, earth gate, meet the 
magic spell punk. This one's my favorite. Hide the sheep in a water gate, do another shock and bolt puzzle, the second sheep shooter is broken. And now that we're heading to the last one, we get a climb zone and Spyro's adventure music. <laughs> The most unique elemental gate, the magic and earth gate, with one of Gilgren's cousins. Okay, yeah, look, I know, last one, I promise. And he asks us to get a fish for him. But once we get it, just look. The fish! Its power is mine! I think I'm shrinking! It don't work! Ah! It does work! Yeah. After we beat up every enemy in an arena and do one more shock and bolt puzzle, the last sheep shooter gets absolutely fucking oh. Flynn blows up the door, leading us into chapter 16, where Chaos's mom has been waiting for us. And now we have a cool and awesome epic boss fight with her. Yeah, not really. In fact, other than her just floating in the background, most of the level is just fighting waves of evilized characters. After doing that, Chaos's mom goes into the portal, where in real life, you need to remove the character from the portal to see her. The second round is more of the same thing, while in the final round, you have a boss fight with Bubba Grubs, which is even more difficult by the fact that the spinning and shooting greebles are attacking as well. After her getting into the portal one more time, Tessa cuts down a mirror and Chaos's mom is now stuck in the mirror again. Holy shit, we're actually almost done. Oh look, that one's green and that one's gray. In Prime, you just can't see it. Since Swap Wars released on seven different consoles, I wanted to see all the differences between each console. The Xbox 360, PS3, PS4, and Xbox One versions, other than a few frame drops here and there, they're all the same game. The Wii U version does add the ability to check your scanner stats on the gamepad and touchscreen in the menus, but that's really it. Then the Wii version. <laughs> What happened to you? Swap Force on the Wii is the most significantly different version. In fact, this version wasn't even made by Vicarious Visions, but instead Benox, who in the years since has made games like Crash Team Racing Nitro Fuel, which is an amazing game. So what happened here? It looks like shit, some parts of the game are changed or fully removed, and overall it's the worst version of Swap Force, is what you expect me to say. Look, I can say this is the worst version, but honestly, I kinda like how low quality it is. And even the things that were removed, like the turret shooting section in Boney Islands, and moved around like the Sneak Swap Zone and Cascade Khaled, are nice changes. And overall, I'm impressed that they were even able to get a game like Swap Force to run on the Wii, even if it is technically the worst way to play it. Then there's the 3DS. It's an entirely different game from the consoles, so I don't want to go over it too much as I feel like it deserves its own discussion, but in short, it's a platforming game where every Skylander is saved to the console. If you want to play Swap Force in the best way possible, play it on the Series X with the PS5. The worst way is definitely the Wii version, and the 3DS, I'd just rank it in the okay tier. Alright, final boss. Wait, why am I paper? Now, the final level. After Chaos left his mom, him and Glumshanks went to go put evil ass crystals in the volcano. Even though the main characters were able to get there, all the crystals fell on Chaos, creating super evil chaos. And he somehow looks better than most Skylanders. Okay, final boss! This your crushing deep, deep. Okay, you know what? So many questions, but mainly, who have I curious visions thought, yeah. I want that in the game. How is this game rated A10 plus? Should have been an A. After doing that, um, okay, whose Wattpad is this? Now that you're in Chaos's mouth, you have to break the crystals that are stuck in his teeth, while Chaos throws in chompies and golems. And after doing that, Chaos spits you out and you fall in his ear, which leads you to Chaos's brain. This is the most normal part of the fight. First, Chaos sends in Glumshanks. You can stand still and he always drives off the platform. Three crystals fall down and you have to break them. Chaos sends in more enemies, three more crystals fall down, and after breaking these ones, Chaos sends in sheeps with his head on them. And after breaking three more crystals, Chaos spits you out in a cannon to conveniently right there. So after running, jumping over flames, and almost dying, Chaos is finally defeated. Flynn, Tesla, and Sharpfin all celebrate, but the volcano is about to explode. But it's revealed that due to the explosion, Super Evil Chaos left, it caused Chaos and Glumshanks to be swapped. The crew were able to celebrate at the festival as Flynn gets his hat back, ending the story of Swap Force. After beating the game, you unlock Nightmare Mode, which is the hardest difficulty, and after beating the game again, you unlock Flynn's Volcano Hat. Two challenges are unlocked, where it's pretty much going back to the original levels and getting the highest score or beating the level as fast as possible. You can also replay all the Swamp Zones with special challenges to get more stars. Lastly, there's the bonus missions, but these missions have nothing to do with the story mode and are more like small challenges like killing chompies or killing the fake sheep. But after collecting every star from every story, score, time, Swap Zone, arena, mini achievements, and tapping in almost every Skylander, you did it. You 100% completed completed Swap Force, no you didn't. Swap Force has achievements for the Xbox and PlayStation consoles, and although most of them are still unlockable, one isn't, and that's the newsletter achievement. You would unlock this by reading the message of the day, but due to the message no longer appearing in game, it's currently the only achievement in not only Swap Force, but Skylanders that can't be unlocked. But other than that, if you did everything else, that was Skylanders Swap Force. Overall, that game got pretty positive ratings. 85s, 8 out of 10s, people seem to really like this game, with some even still considering this to be the best game in the series. 
But that doesn't mean that this game is perfect. Other than the previously mentioned criticism, some say that the levels were a bit too long, which honestly, if you compare the Swap Wars to the previous games, then yeah, I see why people would say that. But most games these days are getting longer and longer, so this criticism, although valid, doesn't really hold much weight. And the other main criticism is the lack of reasons to swap. Yeah, if you don't like having fun. The point of this game is to swap around the bodies to find the combination that you like. So if you like playing as the basic character, that's fine. And if you like a certain swap, then that's also fine. Regardless of any criticism, Swap Wars sold pretty well, with it selling over 6.3 million copies. Well, that's it for me. Bird up, dude, where are you going? Listen, you've talked for long enough. I have to go. Wait, but Bird up! At least I still have you guys. Of course, Andres, you're practically family. I will listen to anything you talk. Wait, Andres, what's going on? Why am I in this case? Get me. Due to how successful not only Swap Force but Skylanders was, a fourth game pretty much had to happen. And on April 23rd of 2014, Skylanders Trap Team would be announced, with the gimmick being the ability to trap and play as new villains, which is still to this day the most popular video on the Skylanders YouTube channel. Trap Team would release later that same year on nearly every console, and for all intents and purposes, it's a pretty good game. But in sales, something odd would happen, as it wouldn't perform as well, with it selling over 4.6 million copies, which is still a pretty good amount, but it would be the lowest out of the four games. And Trap Team would be the last Skylanders game to be considered good. Since Activision loved being Activision, in early 2015, Skylanders Superchargers would be announced and released later that same year, with having the ability to drive vehicles. Even though the game had a pretty good racing mode, brought back a lot of the characters from Swap Force, and had Bowser and Donkey Kong as guest star characters, Superchargers continued to downfall, with it only sung somewhere in the range of 2.8 million copies, a 38% drop, but still did okay enough to justify one more game. And in 2016, Skylanders Imaginaries would be announced and released later that same year. But by this point, no one really cared. With how oversaturated the entire Bring Toys to Life genre was, it it just seemed like they gave up with Imaginators. Like, how do you go from new series, expected sequel, and a fresh, unique idea to play as bad guy, drive car, and fuck it, we don't care, do whatever you want? It put me in the hospital. Why aren't you guys saying anything? Imaginators ultimately didn't do well with it only selling under 2 million copies. Although there were more figures that were meant to be released, in fact there was meant to be another year for Imaginators after the release of Robo, it marked the end of Skylanders, with any future plans for Imaginators being scrapped in favor of continuing the Netflix series Skylanders Academy, which even then was cancelled after its third season in 2019. After the show concluded, Skylanders was given one more chance with the mobile game Skylanders Rings of Heroes, but seemingly due to a lack of a player base, on February 28th of 2022, the game would be shut down. And as of now, Skylanders is considered a dead series, but the community is still keeping the game alive, with new things being discovered, people making content, and still being mentioned in current media. It's clear that even if the series is never coming back, the community will always find a way to keep these games alive, even if we're never going to get a Swap Force HD. Maybe we shouldn't have moved in. Every version of the game are fairly cheap, being around $5 to like a dollar, except for the Xbox One and PS4 versions, due to both of them being later releases of the game, are worth around $40 to $60. A majority of the figures from the base set are cheap, with most of them costing costing around $5 to $15 each, with the only notable characters being Doomstone being priced at around $25, Scratch being priced at around $40, then the UFO hat, due to it being a piece of cardboard and easily losable, it almost never goes on auctioning sites, but it's worth around $80 or so. The in-game variants are also fairly cheap, with most costing similar to the base set characters. As for the chase variants, Metallic Green Washbuckler and Metal Heavy Duty Sprocket are the cheapest, costing around $15 each. As for everyone else, due to them being found by pure luck or conventions, all of them go for around $200 to $500 to a pop Possibly even more. Give me a second. Who was that? Oh, hey, Birdo. Birdo, look, dude, I'm sorry, okay? Look, you can come back inside, right? Look, we can talk about anything you want, right? I'm sorry that we're talking. <laughs> Wait, Birdo? Birdo! Get me out of here! What is this? Look, what is even going on, Berta? I need to get out! I need to- Brother, girlfriend, get him! What? What? Oh. Ah! Alright, that's enough. Berta, what's going on? I fucking hate you. You never shut up. <laughs> Everyone wants to leave you. I never liked you. And now you're gonna be gone forever. Okay, wait, Berta, right? Look, can I at least finish talking about Swap Force? You have got to be kidding me. You're going to be dead, and yet you still care about this stupid game. Look, my my, my last request, please. You know what, fine. Let's hurry up. Okay, look. Swap Force 
has its problems. Collecting every figure is pricey, 100%ing the game is more annoying if anything, and some parts of the game are just flat out bad. But for every bad thing it does, it, there's like 5 other things it does better. With the game having lovable characters, fun and unique levels, it has by far the most unique gimmick in the entire series, it left an impact on not only me, but gaming in general. As no other Bring Twist to Life game would be as unique as Swap Wars. Even with me, the game helped me look at media in a different way, and the fact that I'm still sitting here after 10 years playing the same game with the same figures and talking about it like it's the greatest thing ever made, should show how much of an impression this game left on me. Although it may have set the bar a bit too high for the Skylander series, as no other game in the series would really capture the same uniqueness and creativity that the game had, which is why I consider Swap Wars to be the peak of Skylanders. Okay, look, in bad suit, okay? Look, can I just go back to my room, please? Hurry up, we're talking about the mini! Angry Birds Star Wars. My Dr. Mario World. Mega Man. Meme Run. <laughs> <laughs> Andres, Andres, oh my god, family, I think we actually killed him. Good Fantastic work, little work, guy. Brother. I'm so proud of my children. Bird up. Bird up. Wait, what? So, what do you think of the game? I thought you were dead. Okay, look, I tried to that one time right, but we're talking about the game here. Whatever, the game is fine. Just go get me a snack. What, but... Whatever, man. You all had one child. We're sorry, Bird up. He just wouldn't shut up. It's fine, we will get him one day, maybe not today, but one day, or not, who knows at this point. Can we at least do the joke one more time? It was always my favorite part during these discussions. Of course. Bird up! Ah! Die. <laughs>